Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can guess by the title of this video, today we are going to talk about tracing. Uh, when it is okay, uh, when it isn't, when it can be helpful and when it should be avoided. So like any other artistic tool, tracing has specific ends that it can help achieve, but also specific limitations and times when uh, it's really just not gonna be productive or helpful as a tool. And we're gonna unpack that and talk about all of this in the video, as well as my personal thoughts on tracing. Uh, but before we dive into that, I just want to say a quick thank you to my patrons who support this channel financially. They make it possible for me to put weekly videos out there, and uh, I appreciate them all so, so much. Uh, I try my best to create a really fun community over there as well and give additional peeks behind the scenes and surprise packs. And we do monthly patron critiques where I critique one of your pieces of art so that we can all learn together. Uh, if that's something that you are interested in joining in on, you can find the link to it in the description box. And uh, yeah, just again, big thank you to everybody who is contributing there. Uh, even just a dollar a month makes a huge difference and makes it possible for these videos to come out every week. So thank you. All right, so first off, I'm gonna raise a common concern and something that uh, maybe some of you are even thinking right at this moment, and that is tracing is cheating. So I'll address this more and more in depth later in the video, but to start with, let me just say that many, maybe even most of the people who bring up this concern and who get really worked up about it, who get their feathers all riled up, they tend to not be professional artists themselves. Um, they also usually don't understand that tracing is not a panacea. So tracing is no silver bullet. It's not going to fix all of your artistic problems. Uh, it's not going to make you a master painter. It won't even make you good at drawing. So uh, as I said, tracing is a tool and it has some things that it can be helpful in, but it's not this cure-all that's going to fix all of your artistic woes. And as I said, I'll talk more about this, but I did just want to take a moment to acknowledge at the front of the video that this can be a contest issue. And uh, I'm expecting that there will be some strong opinions in the comments uh, because of that. And uh, I just wanted to acknowledge that and kind of clear the air a little bit that this is a, a bit of a hot topic and it's something that people tend to feel strongly about one way or another. All right, so you may know this if this is a topic that you're interested in, but many well-known artists use tracing in their work. So even going back to uh, the Renaissance, artists like um, Vermeer and Caravaggio and Rembrandt are known to have used a tool called the camera obscura. And this is basically just a kind of projection device that would enable them to project their reference onto the canvas so that they could get down a starting point for their painting. Uh, a more contemporary, also very well-known artist would be Norman Rockwell, and he is known to have used tracing in his work. Um, but yes, uh, those are a couple, a few really famous, really well-known artists who are known to have incorporated the tool of tracing into their work. And uh, I can say that I know many, many contemporary artists who are my peers and friends, uh, people that I know online who also use tracing as a tool, uh, either some of the time or the majority of the time in their work. The only thing that tracing can be helpful with is that it can be a great time saver, uh, particularly if you are a commercial artist or, I mean, I guess even a fine artist because they are also on the clock making things for shows. Uh, if you're somebody who has to produce a lot of work on a strict time schedule, tracing a using a tracing as a part of your kind of starting sketch can give you um, a good foundation point, a good starting point for a painting, and it can help you get to that starting point more quickly so that you can dive into the painting more quickly and spend time on uh, the painting, the drawing itself. And in my opinion, that is really the only advantage of tracing. And uh, we're going to talk about the many, many disadvantages, disadvantages of tracing and the reasons why uh, you may want to stay away from it, depending on where you are in your artistic journey. Okay, so as I have already said in a few places, tracing is not a cure-all. Tracing will not help you learn how to draw from observation, and uh, it's not going to make you better at drawing. It's not going to make it easier for you to paint. Uh, most importantly, if you are tracing before you know how to draw really well, it's going to hamstring you and make it so that you don't ever really learn how to see your subject accurately. So all tracing can do is, as I said, help you set down that basic starting point, but it's not going to improve your skills and it's not going to... Um, 
it'll get in the way of you developing those foundational skills that are also really important for the later stages uh, of a drawing or a painting or whatever it may be. Okay, so why does that matter? Why is that important? Uh, so I, I thought for a while about an analogy here and I think this makes sense, but uh, let me just dive in and uh, you can tell me if it doesn't. But imagine if you were a dancer or an actor, um, or maybe imagine if you were just you, if you're, if you're somebody who isn't a dancer or an actor, not a professional, um, starting with a tracing would be like starting with choreography or a, a script. So if you're somebody who has no experience with, uh, with dancing, if you've never danced a ballet, uh, and somebody, or, or maybe you, you have a little bit, but you, maybe you don't know point or you're just a very, very beginner, uh, and somebody gives you choreography for, uh, some really Really complicated ballet for Swan Lake. I don't know. I don't even know how complicated that is. That's how little I know about dancing, but I'm using it as a metaphor anyway. Um, if somebody gives you the choreography for Swan Lake and all you know how to do is like a basic plie, you're not going to be able to do anything with that. Or if you do try to do anything with that, the result that you'll end up with will still be, and I don't mean this in a critical way or a negative way, but uh, the result will still be very amateurish. And that's because you don't have the skills yet to, to fill out all, all of the detail, all of the nuance, all of the depth that's included in that choreography. So you can think of a tracing kind of like that. A tracing is like, the the starting point it's it's the choreography but if you don't have the the muscle memory and the years of practice and the skills uh, to see well or to dance well you're not going to be able to fill out that uh that starting point and make a beautiful artistic finished product. So based on this analogy, you can probably guess where I'm going with my own personal views on tracing. And uh, my opinion is that tracing as a tool is really only helpful and beneficial if you already know how to draw from observation really well uh, and are, are very comfortable with that and uh, it's something that you have a lot of skills and experience in. So if you are a new or a hobby artist who is looking for that kind of magical shortcut to developing your drawing skills so that you can just focus on the fun part, the painting, uh, I'm sorry to tell you that tracing is really not it. And there are a few reasons for this. Um, number one, I kind of have already mentioned that uh, tracing will not help you to think about your subject in three dimensions. So if you, uh, again, are just starting out in your art journey, if you trace from the very beginning without ever learning how to draw from observation well, you're going to think about your subject in two dimensions. And one of the hardest things to learn, at least for me, when, uh, when you're getting started with observational drawing is to really be able to conceptualize your subject in three dimensions. And that's one of the reasons why people will say it's so important to draw from life when you're first getting started as opposed to drawing from a photo reference because you do really need to develop that ability to kind of abstractly conceptualize your subject as a, uh, as a three-dimensional object in space. And if you are working from a tracing from the get-go, you're never going to develop that skill. It's all, you're always going to see your subject as a flat, um, two-dimensional. You're not going to have a sense of the form and the fullness and the body of your subject. And if your goal is to ultimately create realistic work, which is usually the people who are tempted to trace right from the beginning without learning how to draw, they're really interested in realism and they want to create realistic work. And if that is your goal, you first and most fundamentally need to learn how to see your subject in that way. See your subject as a, a three-dimensional object in space. Uh, and learn how to understand that and conceptualize it and translate it to uh, your substrate, to your piece. And learning to draw is the first and most important step, uh, learning to draw from observation is the first and most important step in learning to see that way. So when you first learn how to draw from observation, when you're first learning about things like proportion and perspective, you're spending tons of time going back and forth between looking at your subject, putting it down on your paper, and then just looking back and forth and comparing the two and uh, measuring whether you do it mentally or whether you do it with a pencil. Um, that is That takes up an enormous amount of time and it can feel like a drag and it can feel like like a waste, but what you're doing is developing the skill of, of being able to see your subject accurately and being able to compare from your subject to your painting. And it may seem like, oh, this is a really different skill than painting. And, and indeed, there are additional skills involved in painting, but that ability to look at your subject and uh, 
to look at your subject in life, whether it's a reference image or, or real life, and look at your painting, your piece of art, and be able to see where things are not matching up, where, uh, where things need to change in your piece, you first start to develop that skill when you learn to draw. And if you don't learn to do that, anything else, like developing form, developing value, uh, dimensionality, light and dark, color, all of that is gonna be really, really hard to do. And uh, it's kind of like trying to learn how to ride a bike before you can walk. So uh, you do still, in my opinion, you do still really need that foundation of being able to draw from observation before you can uh, do light and dark from observation or color from observation. And yes, those things do seem more fun and it's so tempting to just jump right in, but trust me, it will be harder in the long run if you don't spend the time learning how to draw from observation. And another reason tracing uh, before you know how to draw well can hamstring you and uh, make your work more difficult in the end is often, especially if you're working from photo references or if you're in commercial illustration or art like me, you will need to work from multiple references at the same time. I hardly ever, especially if it's for a client, get to work just from a single reference. It's almost always from multiple references. And the only way that you can make that look realistic and can have it make sense is if you are able to really thoroughly understand that three-dimensional concept and be able to conceptualize, okay, my, my subject is at this perspective. I'm seeing it from this angle. So in order to make these other references work, I need to tweak them so that they're also from that angle. And maybe uh, we'll even need to invent some elements uh, that are not included in the reference image. Basically, you have to be able to improvise and think on your feet. And if you are fully relying on tracing, if you've never learned how to draw, you're not going to be able to do that. And you'll really just be kind of stuck and um, tied to just the single reference image that you have for your tracing. And the last thing I'll try to say is if you try to trace something really nuanced, like let's say the human face, and uh, you do not understand how to draw the human face, if you don't know how to draw from observation, if you don't understand the planar structure of the face, uh, yeah, if you don't, if you haven't learned all of that yet, um, it may actually be really difficult to get a good tracing, to get an accurate tracing. Because in order to use tracing as an effective tool, you really have to know where to put the lines. And uh, some of that is not always obvious. So if you're just doing something, if you're tracing a cube, then yeah, it may be pretty obvious where to put the lines. But if you're tracing something that's more nuanced, you really need to know how to draw that thing as well in order to, to have a sense of where the helpful points of reference are and where you need to put lines. And uh, in fact, on that note, uh, if a tracing is done by somebody who doesn't know how to draw, like if they've traced something and then they paint it, uh, it is usually pretty obvious. Like I, I can spot that pretty easily. If, if someone who doesn't know how to draw well is using a tracing for the starting point, yeah, you, you can just tell. <laughs> However, if someone who really knows how to draw well and really understands their craft um, if they use tracing, like Norman Rockwell is a good example. People are often really surprised to learn that he traced and same with the Renaissance artists. And that's because those people already really knew how to draw well from observation. Okay, so uh, I don't wanna go on about this too much because I feel like I've probably already made my point pretty clear, but um, tracing is a tool that I do sometimes use along with many other tools in order to speed up my artistic process. And essentially what it will save me is depending on how complex the subject is 30 to 60 minutes in developing a sketch. However, I drew exclusively from observation for over 10 years before I ever started tracing. And there are still many subjects, especially if it's a simpler subject, that it's just quicker and it's more efficient to just draw it from observation. So uh, especially when I'm making client work and I'm under a deadline and I have a lot of stuff to produce, I tend to just choose whichever is the most expedient approach, whether that be drawing it from observation or using a sketch as a starting point. So the ultimate question, is it okay? for you to trace? Is it okay for me to trace? Uh, and my ultimate answer would, would be uh, that totally depends on your goal. So if your goal is to learn how to draw and, uh, and then paint realistically from observation, uh, including form, dimensionality, and color, then I would say you should not use tracing until you can draw from observation really well. Uh, in fact, I think probably a good question to ask yourself would be if you're, if you're starting on a painting, you're looking at a subject and you want to get going on that. If you look at that subject and think, 
think I can, I can draw that from observation. No problem. Or, you know, it's going to take me an hour, but yeah, I know I can draw that from observation. Um, then maybe you, you are ready to, uh, to use tracing as a tool. Uh, but if you, if, if the reason you're wanting to trace is because you feel like you can't draw that thing very well, then it's really not going to help you. It's really going to be counterproductive. And, uh, in the end, it, it, it'll, you're not going to end up with the, the type of result that, um, that you want. And I mean, I don't know. I should be careful. Maybe, maybe you will end up with the type of result that you want. But if, if again, you are looking for that realism and realistic color, realistic form and values, you really do need to know how to draw it well from observation first. So ask yourself, can I draw this well? If I can, then maybe I can go ahead and use tracing and save myself a few minutes. Uh, if I can't yet, then I probably do still need to really take the time to learn and look at that subject and learn how to see it well before I dive into the later phases of the piece. So basically the answer to that question depends on uh, where you are at in your artistic journey and what your goals are uh, for your art. All right, so that is it for this video. I will go ahead and just include the caveat that I always try to include when I'm talking about a contentious subject. And that is that like anything in art, all of this is subjective and uh, you should take what you want from it and ignore the rest. Just like any artistic advice, take what's helpful and forget about the rest. So uh, either way, I hope this video um, did have some good insights for you and it was helpful to, to talk about. And I guess regardless, I feel like it's, it's good to just bring up some of these subjects and to be more open about them and honest about them in conversation, um, especially if they're things that people kind of feel embarrassed about or are worried about or have anxiety about whatever. I think uh, the more we talk about it, uh, the better off we all are. So as always, let me know if you have questions follow-up questions about this or ideas for other videos, whatever. You can leave all of those in the comments. Um, I am not always able to reply to every comment. I try my best, um, but I tend to go through phases where I can reply to some and then a long time before I can reply to others. But I do read every single comment. So um, please know that. And I, I so appreciate your, your kind feedback. And um, I especially love it when I see you guys answering each other's questions and being encouraging to one another. So um, please keep doing that. I do my best to, to jump in when I can and where I can. Um, but just know that I'm, I'm, I do read all of them and I appreciate all of them and I appreciate all of you for watching this video. Um, if it was helpful, please do consider sharing it, uh, leaving a thumbs up, giving a thumbs up, putting a comment down there, following, nope, subscribing. <laughs> and of course you can follow me on Instagram too. I'm at Kendall Hilligus. Uh, and that is it. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.